Home runs and strikeouts continue to rise. Games haven't been this quick since the 80s, and attendance reached 70 million for the first time since 2018. Yet baseball could be in trouble. Hall of Famers, scouts, and even current managers can't watch today's game. Cut out a whole generation of fans who stayed after the strike. The average fan can't afford to go to the game, much less a family, while the traditions and unwritten rules are endangered. This is all part of the modern game. The White Sox saw old school and new school combine when they hired Tony La Russa as their manager before 2021. Instantly questions arose about how he'd deal with players like Tim Anderson, who were at the front of the Let the Kids Play movement. Less than two months after the hire, we saw how La Russa felt about breaking unwritten rules. Yes. 3-0. and Oh, he loaded up. Mercedes tattoos it to center. I was upset because that's not a time to swing 3-0. and Deal yeah, on Twitter no, earlier that's today. Really oh, see now, he threw it, Mercedes. I don't, I don't have a problem with how the Twins handle that. It was near impossible for even a 76-year-old Tony La Russa to mess up the 2021 White Sox roster, but after a disappointing 2022 season, falling asleep in the dugout, and an organizational mess, we saw the end of an old-time manager in the modern game. It's not just older managers that follow these unwritten rules. Mid-40s Chris Woodward took exception when Tatis Jr. swung out a 3-0 pitch at a grand slam with the team up seven runs. Woodward would state post-game that, Yeah, I didn't like it, personally. You're up by seven in the eighth inning. It's typically not a good time to swing 3-0. That's kind of you know, the way we were all kind of raised in the game, but the norms are being challenged on a daily basis. So just because I don't like it doesn't mean it's not right. Admitting that it's a different game, but still feels like the unwritten rules should be followed. And again, his own manager called him out too, calling it a learning opportunity. Running up the score is an unwritten rule in every sport, from taking a knee in football or dribbling out in basketball, but baseball is a different game. There's no clock and you can't expect a hitter to give up an at-bat, especially one that needs to add to his stats to defend himself in arbitration. But the biggest issue is coming back down seven or more isn't unheard of. Sprinting in Springer and Bichette oh. and Springer collide. The Mariners have tied the game. The lead. Here's the pitch of the way, swinging a line drive into right field. Coming in Julio, he makes the catch and the ball game is over. Regardless of up 30 to 3, should players take the blame for breaking these types of unwritten rules? The most intimidating pitcher of his era, Bruce Gossage, would say they had it coming. It will not go well in the fraternity of uh, grown up baseball players. I have no idea what just happened. Mad Max with a few more words for Mad Bomb. I've never seen this. Adapt to die. Managers today can't design a lineup the way it used to be. Speed leaning off, best bat in the three hole, and the most powered batting cleanup. Managing a team is controlled by analytics, from the lineup, who to start, and the first one to come out of the bullpen. La Russa couldn't adapt. Other guys who have been around changed their ways and it's led to success. Could we throw Babe Ruth into today's game and would he be successful? Could we throw Tatis Jr. into the 80s? The answer to both is no. Tatis would be forced to retire with amount of concussion see that from pitches thrown at his head. The question with Ruth has sparked many different takes, but we don't need to go that far back. Hall of Famers as recent as Tripper Jones don't want to play in today's game, stating that it blows his mind how many strikeouts there are. Although he would have liked shifts to be as common as they are now because he'd plan on beating them. Hidden runs, stolen bases, and bunts continue to drop too. Alex Rodriguez is on every Sunday night claiming how he'd like to see more players bunt, but the analytics go against it, as sacrifice bunt has become even more rare after adding the designated hitter into the National League. Even being called foolish in a new article, your expected runs drop 0.2, I meaning if you bunted 10 times, you lose out on an average of two runs in the situation of bunting a player from first to second. Future Hall of Famer Zach Greinke said it's smart, but still isn't a fan of how the game has changed over his career, feeling that pitchers don't get the money they deserve because of strict pitch counts and the heavy use of the bullpen, restricting the amount of innings they throw every five games. Does taking pitchers out before they reach 100 pitches and or get to the seventh inning help? We'll never see pitchers like Cy Young or any guys from that era again, nor should we. But pitchers' health has still only gotten worse over the years. Some of the best pitchers are out with injuries in 2024, including Jacob deGrom, Shohei Otani, and Brian Woodruff, hurting not only the pitchers, but the team's playoff chances and their team payrolls. No one has pulled a healthy pitcher quicker than now former Brewers manager, Craig Council. I have no idea what just happened. I've never seen this. Miley gives up a leadoff walk, and they took him out. My mic works. I just don't, I don't, I'm trying to process. I've heard of going to your bullpen early. Some said Council should apologize for lying, and others could only respect the gutsy move. Even Dodgers manager Dave Roberts said, you've got to prepare. For the Brewers, this move didn't work out, losing game five and eventually the series. 
out. But it did have a long lasting effect on baseball. Before the 2020 season, MLB introduced the three batter minimum rule, forcing pitchers to face three batters before exiting, making sure this never happens again and to speed up the game of pitching changes, getting rid of the lefty specialists. Guys who were only on teams to get a left hand batter out, then be removed. Rob Manfred's personality since taking over the commissioner role has been to speed up the game. You could go nearly eight minutes at the ballpark without seeing anything happen, a veteran scout said, and he isn't wrong. With the step-offs, throwovers, and taking much longer than now the 20 seconds they're allowed, you might see one at bat during that time. With games reaching an average of three hours and 11 minutes in 2021, Manfred introduced a very controversial pitch clock along with other rules to help the offense. The majority of fans hated the pitch clock initially when baseball was the only sport that didn't have a clock. It ruined the uniqueness of the game. I was one of those people who agreed. This wasn't baseball anymore, but was throwing a single pitch every two minutes baseball instead? Games were 24 minutes shorter and attendance was way up. It didn't matter what anyone thought. These rules were good for baseball. My opinion along with many others changed too. Fans may like it, but do the pitchers? Soon be Hall of Famer Max Scherzer blames the pitch clock for the rise in pitcher injuries in 2023. Scherzer missed some of 2023 and will miss months of 2024 due to injury. But it's not just him saying that. Multiple surgeons who have done surgeries on pitchers claim the injuries were much more severe than in years past. Could it actually be the pitch clock's fault? It's only been one year and there's not enough to support that claim so far. Injuries are longer and runs were higher than the previous two seasons, thanks to bigger bases and limits on defensive shifts. The days of Ricky Henderson are over and are becoming rarer by the year. For five years, the most bases stolen was only 46. But before that, we saw back-to-back -back seasons with 60 plus by two different players. This year, they returned. Acuna had the first 40-70 season in MLB history, while Astori Ruiz finished fourth in the modern era for rookies in the last 100 years. Analytics told managers that they were not worth the risk, and so the decline of them happened. But did it matter when the three true outcomes were in full effect? Swing and a miss, and Stanton, and how about this crowd booing him? Bullpen. And oh you're live! Give him a three spot! He's over 1,200 feet of home run. A three home run night. And, and they're walking him with the bases loaded and intentional walk to Barry Bonds. A home run was the same no matter where the runner on base was. Same as a strikeout. And if you had a dangerous hitter up, all it did was open up first base to walk that batter intentionally. Since 2016, the most home runs a game on average took up the top eight spots with the exception of 2022, reaching as high as 1.39 homers a game. Chick stick the long ball. Glavin and Maddox, who made that phrase, still claim Chick stick the long ball, but realize the players in 300 with most singles aren't going to get the same paycheck as the ones clobbering 40, 50, or even breaking the American League record. Pete Rose got tired of watching highlights because every clip was just a home run. The all-time hits leader hit a max of 16 homers in a season, a mark that nearly every hitter can reach today. Jim Leyland would disagree, saying that not everyone can hit a three-run homer. Leyland isn't wrong, but a player who can't is very rare in 2023. Only 10 players finished with less than double-digit home runs the previous year, and only two of them were at least average hitters according to their WRC+. Some are on teams because their defense and others just weren't good. Not every player can hit a home run, but nearly all who can't aren't in the league anymore. No one has criticized the modern game more than Goose Gossage, stating that it breaks his heart seeing all the changes from when he played. And the part that makes him the most upset is instant replay. Bohm's gonna try it. Here he comes and he's safe at the plate. And the call is upheld. Bad calls like this aren't what's upset Gossage. Instead, staying umpires made a call and managers ran out of the dugout and threw bases and kicked dirt and brought everybody out of their seats, whether you were for that team or against it. It was exciting, it had character. They're taking every bit of character there was in the game out of it. In 2023, we saw only one player get suspended for making contact with an umpire. Yelling and ejections are still part of the game, but managers aren't tossing the rosin bag like a grenade anymore. Gossage went on to say, just put a nerd out there because anyone can manage today. Some of the best managers in baseball are guys who always listen to analytics. It's led their teams to the playoffs, but for guys like Kevin Cash, it led to one of the most questionable decisions in recent memory. 73 pitches, two hits. Snell can't believe it. 
While Craig Council brought the Brewers most consistent success they've seen, they fell short of the ultimate goal every time. With multiple head scratching decisions scapegoated by analytics, but now may have better reason behind them. While Brian Snicker led his team to a World Series title along with lots of other success and he's as old school as it gets. Gossage has never been afraid of voice his opinion when it comes to politics or baseball, even going as far to say he hates that mother effer and might punch Rob Manfred right in the nose and spatter his nose all over his face right in front of the hotel lobby. Does Rob Manfred deserve the hate? He called what 30 teams fight for, for 162 games plus the postseason, a piece of metal. He was smiling when MLB had a canceled beginning of the 2022 season, and the rules he's implemented has shown he has no respect for the game before him. When it comes to punishments, many feel like he's been too light, especially on the Astros. He did admit calling the World Series trophy a piece of metal a mistake and said giving the Astros players immunity, not my best decision ever. But one of his most power-hungry moves was firing highly respected reporter Ken Rosenthal because he wrote in an article that Manfred could ruin his legacy if the 2020 season wasn't played. The 2023 season may have changed his legacy for the better this time.